This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Uh, many of you probably already know uh, Maria Cristina Molinari. She's the uh, chief curator, the chief numismatic curator at the Capitoline Museums in Rome, and also a professor at Roma Trey University, and of course a good friend to many of us here at the ANS and a generous colleague. Um, one of her important books I wanted to share, I actually got one of these as a gift in 2015 from her at the International Numismatic Congress, uh, is the publication of the uh, Roman coin find, uh, coin finds from the city of Rome in the first century, the Julio-Claudian and Flavian coins from Rome's municipal urban excavations, which is a very important uh, corpus of finds to compare what was circulating in Rome uh, versus the provinces, so very important work. Uh, she continues to work on coin finds uh, primarily, but also many other things and Republican coins. Uh, and so with that, I'll turn it over to Maria Cristina. Uh, about uh, the ancient numismatics, the review, the uh, journal, the new journal. Right, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> um, at the end of the fourth century BC, at it knows, Rome started to issue struck coins in bronze and then in silver, probably using the mint of Naples in Campania. This innovation, sporadic and short lived, at least until 240 BC, took place in connection with the Roman expansion towards the south of the peninsula. These coins, in fact, seem to have circulated only in the southern Italy. Uh, in a non-Roman environment, as Livy Yarrow has shown in her map, and as Marta Barbato has illustrated in her talks at a meeting at the Royal Netherlands Institute in Rome in February. Before this important novelty, starting from the mid of, uh, fifth century BC, as a medium of exchange, according to a ratio of one pound of bronze, which was the equivalent to 10 oxen or 10 sheep. Molten metal, or livestock was uh, um, used in the equivalent as a, in, the, in the city, as documented by the Lex Eternia Tarpeia of 454 BC and the Lex Venerian Sextia of 452 BC. Although today it is widely accepted that there was no transition from cattle to metal in an uh, evolutionary sense, in the archaic age, as Cristiano Viglietti has demonstrated, um, cast bronze with a weight set according to a fixed system is quite commonly attested during the, the fourth and the third century BC, initially on its own and then along with the minted coins. Evidence of this is provided by an ord from Cerveteri. Cerveteri is here. Rome is here. Um, of about 30, 40 pounds that Raniero Mengarelli discovered at the beginning of the 20th century behind the so-called Tumulo dei Capitelli. This is the Tumulo Capitelli. Capitelli here is the place in two jars, certainly of the Roman production. And in two bowls dating back to the period between the end of the fourth and the beginning of the third century BC. This burial, which ev evidently pertain to an upper class individual would be un unconscionable in Rome where the sumptuary laws did not allow the use of such riches in a tomb. As the exhibition on the Roman Republican age on display at the Capitoline, Capitoline Museum uh, shows. The ice rude, sorry, the ice rude 
um, found in the tomb complies with the Roman Libra weight system with the one tresses, many tresses, anyway, tresses, the pondus, as, semistri, and squadrons, sextant, uncha, and the weight is more or less the same uh, of the regular ice gravel, I mean, the avial um, ice gravel. The true pondus is very similar. Here is the pondus um, to the those that drawn by Garrucci in 1885 from another horde from Servetri. You can see he we have uh, five pieces, and Garrucci uh, wrote, "I have gathered here there's five pieces that came out." of the chair deposit because they give us a simple of the round metal block divided in four parts. Even more so because you can clearly see how the metal has opened its way all the way around to the base. You can see that there is a sort of circular here uh, shape, uh, which therefore had to be mobile. The dating of the pottery of the Mangarelli um, mm, horde allows to, post, to place the ice rude at the end of the fourth and the third century BC, at the beginning of the production of minted Roman coins. This date is confirmed by a finding of ice rude and minted coins in another area of Latium Vetus at Palestrina. Raffaele Garrucci in other times claims to have found the Nord in the, in the, aura of, uh, in the area of the necropolis uh, Prenestina where soldiers were usually buried. In fact, he wrote, sorry. Um, next to the skeleton pad, on the right side, lay a small jumble of metals bound by iron oxide. There are two fragments of ice ruder. I don't know if you can see. Here it's a, a pieces and the other one is here. Um, and then it's, it said, um, there are two fragments of ice rude and Napol Napolitan bronze coin here. You can see. Uh, with the half man faced ox and the head of Apollo with the part of the ep epigraph on the reverse. There is also an iron ring, two fragments of copper bulle, and um, two trunked lamina of the same metal. Garrucci. Um, perhaps it's better, it's possible to, yes, okay. Garrucci on the ground of, of a passage of by Levy regarding the second Punic War believes that the ice ruder remain in, in use at least until the age of Hannibal. The passage states that uh, Hannibal, this he preceded to the grove of Feronia, a shrine which at that, that, that time was noted for its wealth. The people of Capena and the others who lived near, it used to carry theater first fruits and gift in addition according to their means. And that kept it richly adorned by uh, with gold and silver of all this gift the temple was at the time despoiled. Great heaps of bronze were found after the departure of an Hannibal, since the soldier, inspired by religious fear, deposited the crude lamps. I want to show where is the, uh, okay. Feronia is here, Roma, Rome is here, and Cher is here. Feronia is a close, to the Tiber. Um, uh, 
this piece of information seems to be plausible because Eisruden and quite a few fragments of 497 pieces of broken Roman bars have been recently found, although in different environment, in the recently published, uh, published excavation of Lucus Feronia. However, in spite of Garrucci claim, it's not possible to ascertain until when the ice ruder thrown, uh, thrown by Hannibal soldiers, but probably already present in the sanctuary, was used as a dedication. Surely the discovery of ice rude and the so-called broken signatum in association with the struck coins in the order of Lavinium Pratica di Mare in the um, uh, Latium Vetus close to Rome allows us to presume that rough metal weight assessed remained in use at least until 240 BC. This metal is perhaps the same that was redistributed among the citizen as Seth Bernard reconstructed on the basis of historical sources in reference to what did Spurius Carvilius Maximus, who is said that to have distributed a share of his metallic spoil on an individual basis to his cavalry and infantry, giving different am amounts according to rank. But together with the ice ruder, however, as is known, the Roman produced two different forms of money, the ice grave and the Roman bar, bars. The ever series of ice grave has been recently considered in a research carried by Alessandro Yaya and myself. Based on the discovery of a foundation hoard found in Torvajanica, together with the black painted earthenware, a dating of issues between um, 285 and 265 BC is put forward. That is before the foundation of the colony of Castrum Novum, where the hoard of Santa Marinella was found. Furthermore, on the basis of closed hordes, such as the foundation ones, it has been suggested that this material had been used for votive purposes in the construction of bastions along the coastline, Santa Marinella, Agroportuense, Ostia, Solindigens, Anzio, Ardea, and so on along the coastline which, uh, with the foundation of colonies and the fortified sanctuaries to guard the fresh water sources close to the shore against an enemy coming from the sea. Later, after um, 2060 BC, other hordes of Libra and Libra and the sub Libra pieces may have been dedicated to the sanctuaries in the Faliscan area, Sabina and Umbria. Yeah. Immediately after the conquest of Faleri Vetus in 241 BC, more problematic and incomplete appears the documentation of the Roman bars inappropriately called I Signatum found above all in Latium Vetus in South Etruria in Castro Novum and Interquinia. Oh, yeah, I have to come back here. Yeah. Santa Marinella, Castro Novum, uh, Tarquinia is here and uh, in um, La Bruna and Ardea. Um, Interquinia, yes. Actually, Father Garucci, <clears throat> following Bartolomeo Borghesi, ascribes the, the origin of three pieces of the Vatican Museum of this latter city, or to a place where also local pieces are, uh, were produced. 
after the Roman conquest of the 281 BC. Moreover, perhaps from Tarquinia also came the pieces mentioned by uh, J um, James Bites in his letter of 1778. Um, you can see that Tarquinia is the only other um, <clears throat> town who produced Ais Ais Gnatum, so called the Ais Gnatum. Um, and so there is uh, some prob probabilities that, that uh, um, Tarquinia is uh, um, a, a place where the uh, IC, Roman Ice Signatum uh, circulated uh, to. Um, finally, bars were found, uh, I told it in, in the order of La Bruna in Spoleto area. Dating this this piece is probably produced in the same period as the heavy as grave is also problematic. Although Liber Yarrows has recently hypothesized on the basis of the metal analysis that almost all the different series date after 260 BC, after the Battle of Mila, and before the 240 BC. At least three sacred environments are there, Santa Marinella, Castrum Novo, and La Bruna, are identified as the discovery area of the bars. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, the, um, the pieces, the joints by James Byers uh, that I told you, uh, probably from Tarquinia. From the consideration outlined so far, it can be assumed that the Roman state used the large orts or heavy eyes and the sublibral eyes in a sacred milieu, in the foundation of the colonies or in centuries of relevant political importance. According to a, a non-economic approach that is also encountered in the hordes of silver coins of Nora in Sardinia, in so-called the Roman temple. This too is a, rec a recently Romanized environment with the dedication of a sacred buildings. This is a very famous uh, um, hoard. Such a symbolic usage, um, usage of wealth recalls what Lucius Papirius Cursus I'm at. In the year 293, in a rather conservative attitude, attitude because he put the coins inside the, um, the, the temple, as uh, Seth Berna has highlighted. It is also true that from the mid third century onwards, private individuals became inclined to use monetary mediums more and more frequently with a small gift of Roman and foreign stock currency and ice rude in the votive hordes for example, of Southern Etruria, as the consideration by Williams and Pulcinelli show. Besides, a different approach to metal and wealth is provided by Levy description of the Ludi to in um, 217 BC, when the metal offered to the divinity had to the weight as much as the am amount spent the previous year, according to a quantitative and, and the therefore non qualitative value of the gift. This, once again, documents a phase of transition to a more widespread use of bronze at the very end of the third century BC as Barnett and Molinari have already observed for silver coinage. Only at this point did Rome achieve a more fully monetized economy. Thank you very much. I have a question for Maria Cristina. Ciao. 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 But I mean, um, 
I, uh, I would like to know what do you think about the different function of these uh, deposits, whether uh, there is a difference between the first phase, uh, for example, the usage for the first uh, ice gravity deposits and uh, different function for the second phase of the deposits. The first phase is uh, um, in function of this, uh, we say the uh, line mar marginal uh, to, mm -hmm. to, yeah, to yeah. stop the, the, the enemy from the sea. In uh, the other case, it's just uh, a form of um, exaltation. <laughs> of the uh, capacity of the Romans uh, to conquer the, the, um, finally uh, Faleri Vetus, that was a very a, a big problem for the, the Romans, and, um, and to conquer um, the, the area of Spoletus, because Spoletus was a very important place too. Yeah, there is a, a little a difference because, it, but are in function of um, the, the Roman state. I mean, the state decided to um, to put all these big quantity of uh, um, of uh, bronze inside. I mean, in 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 the in the temple and in the sanctuaries and so on. And it wasn't. I think in in the, Perhaps in the first phase, uh, it, it was pr probably a little bit uh, more useful. So, of course, I mean, I know what is your uh, idea on this subject, but so, of course, you don't buy at all the idea of the sacral function of these deposits, or do you? No, because it's not sacral, because it's, it's inside, you know, it's not, it's uh, just to, um, Seth Bernard in the first moment uh, talks about this, but it's not uh, in function of the um, utility of the sanctuaries in this case, it's just a deposit that you um, leave inside, the, uh, under the, the, uh, the, the sanctuary, and it's impossible to, to to use it. Okay. I know it's a completely different idea. And uh, the quantity of uh, bronze, uh, it's uh, very, very large. And the, it, the bronze was very rare, and so especially in the first period. So it's, um, it's a crazy um, way of <laughs> use the money. Um, thank you, uh, grazie mille. Thank you. Ciao. Anyway, it's possible to, to read the, um, I, I didn't give you the, um, the bibliography, but um, there are many articles by Yayan and uh, and me, Barnett and um, Molinari on the Capitoline Horde, and uh, the a lot of um, articles by Seth Bernan that um, they are very useful for the um, historical. Uh, um, uh, reconstruction of the period and so on. But let's say that also thanks to you, since uh, I mean, for the moment, thanks to you and uh, several other uh, scholars uh, in the last 15 years, the ideas about uh, ice gravity changed well, completely. Yeah, Britain, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Lucia, no, could I, I ask a question? To me? Oh, no, oh, no, no. I that always moderating. But to the speaker. yes, of course, please. Yes, yes. Have hordes of ice grave been found outside of Latium? Uh, also, but, um, 
Latium Vetus or Etruria? So it was strictly a, a local coinage. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, thank you. It's a local coinage because it's a particular coinage and you can find something in the in Sicily, for instance, but after the first Punic War and the other things you can find in uh, always in connection with the Roman soldiers, very late, not in the first period. I mean, on the, in the before the first uh, Punic War. In a numismatic chronicle, uh, I don't remember, to 2011, uh, we um, made a list of all the uh, hordes um, of the, the first period before the, 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 the um, 260 BC and um, before the war. And the, the, all these uh, um, um, hordes are in, in the Latium Vetus and in uh, Etruria. Are there any other questions for Maria Cristina? Well, I have a second question. Okay. Uh, Crawford's uh, Roman Republican coinage now is about 50 years old. Right? Yeah. Uh, to your knowledge, uh, does the our current knowledge of Iscrave, would you change any of Crawford's uh, classifications or his dating of the uh, Iscrave and the Iceniatum also? Uh, it's, uh, for the Iceniatum, uh, you have to ask uh, to leave because she thought that um, they were produced before the, I mean, after the, the 260 BC. Mm -hmm. So there is a very different, dif big difference with. For the other things, hey, yeah, no. I, I think that Crawford was uh, um, right for the ice gravel, um, library ice gravel. And it's very difficult to um, classify according to the chronology, um, the, the sub library serious because we don't have so many um, courts. So um, it's difficult. I mean, um, depends uh, if you um, accept the theory that, uh, for instance, uh, all this kind of uh, um, series came after um, the the end of the first uh, um, Punic War, immediately one after one after um, every year, or uh, in a longer period, because we don't have unfortunately um, enough uh, proofs to 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 date uh, well this kind of stereos. I mean, I have my theory, but it's not uh, <laughs> scientific. Can you? There is a other the possibility, for instance, that the last um, series, I mean, the Janus um, Pro, um, doesn't go together by this crazy the uh, theory with the Quadrigatus, for instance. Maybe it's uh, more ancient. I don't know. Right, thank you. So I think it is uh, of the very last period of the. Uh, I mean, I think the, the chronology is right. But uh, for the bronze, I don't know. Because we have a, 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 a huge uh, quantity 
of the production um, of the last series of the um, Ice Grave. So it's very strange that you have this big production just um, at, the, at the beginning of the Second Punic War. And uh, you, they use a lot of coins for the, um, the, the, the buildings of the new temples and sanctuaries. So it's, it's a little bit strange, but it's just uh, in my opinion. Yes, the, the, the amount of Ice Grave of the, uh, the Prow series is just tremendous. A tremendous, I mean, yeah. It's... And it's strange, it's produced just before the Second um, Punic War. So, but we don't know. All right, well, if there's no further questions, then uh, Maria, we thank you very much for your time. And uh, I guess it's evening there, so maybe it's dinner. Yeah. <laughs> lunch time for us so yeah. thank you again great talk bye. Yes, right. thank you uh, bye bye thank you Maria Cristina thank ciao, you ciao, ciao ciao ciao, ciao. ciao. ciao.